Thank you very much for your kind introduction, Simon. Um, first of all, um, I want to apologize for not wearing tie, but please understand I am just against the high carbon consumer society. Okay, so let me begin. And first, uh, I want to circulate something which you will understand what it is said on. So let me begin. My name is Shinya Shoda, um, who's working in the uh, National Research Institute for Cultural Properties in Nara, the old capital of Japan. I'm, I'm also affiliated to the University of York as well as the Saints Ray Institute uh, of UEA. And today I am going to talk about, uh, actually I submitted this title a uh, few months ago, and to be honest I will uh, make a much more focused talk today because I realize it is too much for 30 minutes talk. Anyway, let me start. Uh, this is the outline of my talk. Uh, first, um, I will introduce the German agriculture hypothesis and development of agrobotany in Japan. Second, um, this is part of my work, uh, agrobotany in molecular level. And third, for future angry Japanese research preparation, which is the main uh, topic of, of this symposium. Okay, so uh, please do remember these two terms if you are not familiar with it. So we have, um, of course, you have previous times, and German period lasts uh, more than uh, 10,000 years, uh, from uh, about 15,000 years ago to uh, 2,800 years ago, uh, which um, generally called as uh, hunter, hunting, gathering society. I guess but they have poetry, they have um, sedentism, uh, that's what we uh, call as John period. And later, the Yellow period, which is the time of agriculture, uh, especially we are talking about rice agriculture, uh, which lasts about uh, 1,000 years. So, uh, in, since 1930s, when Dr. Sugao Yamanochi determined the latter Yayoi period as this, the culture of agriculture, or the age of agriculture, it has believed that the rice agriculture was adopted from the continent, especially from the Korean Peninsula, in the Yayoi period, which triggered the wealth accumulation, development of social differentiation, and eventually formation of ancient states. The German agriculture hypothesis were trying this framework by trying to find some evidence of crop cultivation or food production prior to the beginning of the period. But in fact, far before the Yamanouchi study, stone tools of German period was considered to be an agricultural tool. This is one of the earliest, oldest English written archaeology book in Japan by a Japanese author named Notes on Ancient Stone Implements of Japan by Takahira Kanda. Very clearly, uh, please pay attention to the mark one, the number 11. He suggested that this kind of Chipped stone eggs could be used as an implement of agriculture, such as hole. Later on, many scholars discussed the possibility of German agriculture, which are largely divided into two streams, shown here. One is on the Chubu plain at the middle of German era when and where they witnessed the flourishing poultry culture with clay figurines and large sized settlement sites. This is represented by the discussion by A.G. Fujimori et al. Who thought they must have some cultigans which supported the, the large population. Another is on the middle Kyushu, a west word, where they had flourishing material culture gain 
just like the previous stage in Shibu region, uh, which was led by Dr. Mitsuo Kagawa. Not having been supported by any anthropotomical evidence, however, these hypotheses were not fully accepted among scholars. But unexpectedly, from different area from these two, unexpected results were presented at the beginning of this century. The research group led by Professor Seiichiro Tsuji intensively analyzed the botanical remains of the Sanai Mariana site in the Aomori prefecture and found the evidence of chestnut forest management. Not only the identification of word of this symbolic building above uh, right hand above, or just the large larger size of chestnut seeds uh, right hand bottom. This study clearly showed the correlation between the abundance of chestnut pollen and the existence of settlement in the Sanai Variana. Sorry. So this um, dark brown shows the abundance of pollen of chestnuts, which corresponds the the um, occupation of settlement in that site. While there is no chestnut pollen outside of the settlement. So it shows the clear correlation between human occupation and formation of uh, chestnut forest in, the, in early and middle drum period. Given the chestnut is insect pollinated flower, they concluded that high density of chestnut forest had been managed by the settlers of the site. This is beyond the traditional viewpoint of hunter-gatherers of German, as we didn't really think they were producing food by manipulating natural resources. Could we say as domestication? Could we say as agriculture? To examine these questions, we need to look for much more evidence. Now, we are going to see the development of the methodology in archaeobotany. This illustration shows the difference between the traditional water sieving in the right hand and water flotation in the left hand. In short, the flotation method is uh, better for gently breaking plant materials, which is quite fragile, without uh, breaking down the this method is quite useful, and I am using the almost same equipment as 90s. Uh, that was beginning in the 70s or something, but still, the, the methodology is, is very useful. That's why um, we are using almost the same device <coughs> when it was uh, started. Here, the soil. Sorry. So, very uh, shortly, uh, the front remains. Uh, get um, floated uh, using this water to collect it in these sieves with different uh, different size of grids. And um, here this guy appeared again, uh, Professor Ed Grofold, uh, which Simon introduced already. Uh, a few months ago he visited us to find um, almost a similar device which he introduced into Japan 30 years ago. So, yeah, I'm so happy about it. He was as happy as me to find these devices still in use in Japan. So, by doing this, we can correct the ancient uh, child plant materials uh, showed in the uh, right hand, uh, upper right hand, uh, which uh, that are uh, wheat and rice. By water flotation method, um, a lot of uh, evidence of uh, domesticated plants in John period were um, identified, such as pelia or bird, barn and millet, buckwheat, and chestnuts, horse chestnuts, and soybeans, as given, etc., etc. 
And also, AMS uh, method are adopted to these small, tiny brains, which enable us to date these uh, evidence to be dated directly. This is uh, one of my study to uh, date the, uh, one of the earliest rice uh, in Korea. And this was accompanied with pottery, stone tools, as well as the dry pit. So clearly we can identify the beginning of rice cultivation in Korean Peninsula using the carbon dating. In addition, besides the real remains like, like charred grains, uh, crops, such as um, rice, wheat, etc., uh, impression on pottery vessels uh, turned to be quite useful for reconstruction of agricultural activities in the past. Uh, actually, what I ask you to distribute, uh, sorry, circulate is the kit for this method. So the picture on the right hand shows how it works. You can understand it to make this is um, this method uses the silicone uh, which is used in the dentist to get a clear impression of uh, seed remains or other things um, imprinted onto the poultry vessel wall to recover this clear image of a millet or other crop remains, uh, which can be dated by thousands of years. This method is um, fundamentally so simple, and almost anyone can try to correct replicas. So, the form part of this method is just correcting replicas, and the, the later part should be the identification of parts. So, the later part should be difficult, but formal part, everyone all can try it, and the children are really Keen to do that, and in most cases, that's why this method, this way, is now becoming one of the most popular activities for social education program at local museums. And that's why the, uh, the company uh, are selling the kits for doing this debris cutting. Yep, this is what you're looking at. And only two, but uh, two of you can take. <laughs> so there, by um, these are our studies, um, which apply this replication method to Korean, Neolithic, and Bronze Age pottery uh, to successfully find the evidence of millets in Neolithic and horizontal rice in the Bronze Age. It is not only the seeds impressions that we find by using this method. Dr. Sumio Yamazaki found some impressions of weevils, harmful insects. To update that, these are fed by rice, then could be the evidence of the existence of rice crops in the late Jomon period, the period that we have no evidence of charred rice grains. This happened in 2007 and made quite a big issue. But here, we will see it a If you if you can read Japanese, uh, it says, oh, we can eat a They say. So the existence of weevils doesn't support the hypothesis that they have rise at that stage. But tells only there should be some scale of storage of starchy materials along the settlement, which is also important. These days, the study is going rather than examining rice crops, but the evolution or development of insect itself. This study is by Professor uh, Hiroki Obata, who applied X ray CT scan for pottery impression to recover the three dimensional model of weevils as shown in the hand, like this. Beside these insects, still some pottery impression in the period are identified as rice, actually. So still some 
suspicious rights are under debate. But here, the typology, one of the most traditional algorithm method, strikes back. That's all right, they said. Even though those rights equations seem correctly, they are rights, but <coughs> the poetry typology itself are not drawn, they say. So they cannot, even their rise impressions, they cannot uh, get earlier than the arrow period as they uh, advocated the first phrase. So actually, there is no concrete rise evidence in German period at all for now. So very simplified comparison uh, here in terms of plant use between Jowan and Yayoi. In short, Jowan and Yayoi had both had domesticated plants, and Jowan had a wider, lower use of wild resources, and while Yayoi tend to uh, do some intensive production of rice agriculture. So what? What is important is not the evidence of or beginning of agriculture, but the variety of diversity of the way of plants using by the population in Japan or, or surrounding area. So how can we go further? That's the next part of my talk. So I am an archaeologist, but mainly uh, who was working mainly in the field that this is a kind of 21st century archaeologist. So we work in the field and work in the lab. They go to back, bring back to the field, just like other um, natural field scientists. And what is I'm doing in the lab is uh, archaeobotany in molecular level. We call it as biomolecular archaeology. And um, what the method I'm mainly using is they stable isotope analysis of remains, such as uh, plant remains, or uh, lipids, uh, pottery lipid residue analysis, uh, which was remain inside matrix of crazy pottery. And um, today, I, I have little time to talk about everything that, so I choose the second one, the pottery lipid residue analysis, and this is the method, uh, draining the pottery, and extracting the limits and using gas chromatography to understand what was inside the matrix. And we are using two kind of approaches. Uh, one is biomarker identification using TCMS, uh, I believe, which I believe most of you are familiar with. And uh, the other, another is GCCRMS, which is uh, for correspond, uh, compound specific isotope analysis. And even though um, I started this um, work uh, under the collaboration uh, with UK uh, organizations such as uh, University of York, or Bradford, as well as British Museum, um, East Asian materials started to talk something unique in world history. This is the recent work by us, uh, which um, showed the first evidence of media processing in poultry from Korea. So there is a chemical com compound named Miliasi, which is unique to the brain of millet, a uh, certain kind of millet, which means the uh, kiwi, uh, pancreum, and resin. And I found a lot of Miliasi in these poultry leaves. And also, by Testing the uh, carbon isotope analysis, some of them shows the nature of C4 plants, which support our, uh, the evidence that uh, they process the brood form in this poultry. So now, without any grains or impression, we can identify some plant food which was cooked in ancient poultry. This is part new study. When the importance is not only inside Korea or in Japan because we have lack of evidence of child millet grains. In, so you can see the best 
unknown area of Europe television in the center of Eurasian continent. And it is really difficult to collect uh, the botanical evidence directly from, from these areas. Uh, some part, they have uh, a political problem these days, and uh, less and less sites are excavated than uh, the other areas like Europe or in, in East Asia. But we have our collections in Japan or in the UK, which was collected before World War II or World War One from this area, which means we can re excavate these sites using this method, using these functions, to fill the gap of the hidden media history. This is the one, one thing I want to um, promote from now uh, for part of my project. And the second is, um, this is still not published, and I, I'm just writing this paper now, but we started to find some starchy food in, in poultry, nearly Chinese poultry. So these are the compounds uh, we found. So their glucosan is the transformed uh, compound from sugar, which means they, they cooked the starchy food in the poultry or other uh, stills uh, from front uh, support this um, idea. And using um, isotopic analysis for supporting this hypothesis, um, many of them came into the area of C3 France, which suggests they can consume rice or water chestnuts or water lily, which we can find from these sites. So now we can talk about agrobotanical um, evidence, or we can talk about plant use using much more smaller evidence, but uh, much more recoverable uh, uh, evidence, uh, which was quite new in this field. Uh, maybe I will skip this, sorry. So the last part is about Anglo-Japanese research collaboration. So these two studies, uh, which I said quite new, is based on the Anglo-Japanese research collaborations, including myself. So I want to stress the importance of international and interdisciplinary collaboration, not only for better understanding of agriculture in the past, of course, by collaboration, we can share the cutting edge method or our different backgrounds about or our different knowledge on the, on the past of agriculture. But the important thing is um, this kind of collaboration can provide um, sharing different historical background to think about agriculture practice today in the world or in the future in global scale because we can understand the diversity or difference of, of ourselves uh, by learning each other. Uh, this is the um, project uh, we conducted for two years until 2016, uh, named Ponte, uh, as you know, in Italian the bridge, so which bridges our uh, expertise uh, across the continent. Culture innovation and transition in East Asia, bridging expertise across continents. This is what we've done, and a lot of publication must be written <laughs> based on this uh, research. But uh, what I've done, we've done is uh, collecting our poultry in the east end of the uh, European, sorry, Eurasian continent to reconstruct, reconstruct the early use of poultry include including plant processing or maybe seafood or the animal processing using this cutting edge method which was quite successful and I will introduce another collaborative project between uh, Simon and me and uh, Charlotte in SOAS uh, which uh, Named uh, internationalized Nabunke. Nabunke is named the uh, short name of our, of our institution for promoting academic and cultural exchange between Japan and UK to introduce the study by ourselves into a UK audience to get some feedback and promote future collaboration. 
uh, between uh, UK and Japan organizations, which was also quite successful. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of support uh, from SISJAC uh, on this. I, I want to thank again on this. And now we have started, I have started a brand new project named Expresso. I'm exploring poultry use across the German Hungarian tradition, uh, collaborating with a uh, university dog. And so uh, it just began in April, actually, two months. But in these two months, I have introduced the training room for poultry sampling and this lovely pile of GCMS here, waiting for my analysis, and hopefully uh, we can develop new uh, collaborative work between Japan and UK. So, in conclusion, uh, we have cultivated fields and we have grown a um, very nice life seedlings already. So what next? In Japan, May is the season for trans transplanting of rice seedlings. So, let's transplant transplant the seeding together uh, between us, UK, and Japanese scholars. Thank you so much for listening.